Welcome and thank you for joining us for this live televised debate between Republican candidates Paul Battisti and Michael Korchak. We're also streaming this debate live. Now moderating the debate with me tonight, WNBF's Bob Josephs and Present Sun's Bulletin reporter Anthony Borelli. Candidates will have a minute and 30 seconds to answer each question, followed by a 20-second rebuttal. After a coin flip, candidate Michael Korchak will be answering the first question. Bob will start the debate with our very first question. Bob. Thank you very much. Uh, first, we will ask Mr. Korchak, why should Republican voters have confidence that you will be objective, that you will handle every situation that comes before the district attorney's office honestly and truthfully? Well, thank you for that question, Bob. Uh, I'm going to break the format a little bit. I was told I could do an opening statement and then I'll get right into it. After Mr. Battisti goes, I'll get right into answering that question. Uh, my name is Mike Korchak. I'm the Chief Assistant District Attorney at the Broome County DA's office presently. I live in Endwell with my wife of 27 years, Nadine. We have three grown children that we all raised in Broome County. Uh, we're active in our churches, St. Michael's Church on Clinton Street in Binghamton, as well as St. Joseph's Parish in Endicott. I worked in the CYO, the Endicott Little League. I'm a graduate, graduate of the College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts as well as Pace University School of Law. When I got out of law school in 1989, I knew I wanted to be a prosecutor, so I went to work at the Bronx County District Attorney's Office. I intend to use that experience uh, as DA to train other attorneys uh, as well. I've been a senior ADA for 11 years and now chief assistant for three and a half more years. I've had 21 jury trials. Uh, I'd like to use this experience to help the people of Broome County. And now with that question, how can the voters of Broome County be sure that you will be objective if you become the next Broome County District Attorney? Well, as I kind of led into, uh, it's my experience that makes a difference. Uh, I've been a prosecutor for 21 years, an attorney for 30 years. Uh, I worked with judges uh, throughout the county and the state. I was judge in the town of Union at a point in time. The DA needs to be able to evaluate cases and use his experience to do so whether it's popular or unpopular. I'm going to use this experience to do the right thing. And Mr. Battisti, how can Republican voters have confidence that you will be fully objective should you become Broome County's next district attorney? Well, good evening. First and foremost, Bob, I want to thank you. I want to thank Fox 40 and I want to thank Gannett and all the viewers at home, the thousands of people I've met over the last few months. And Mike, thank you very much for being here. This is a wonderful opportunity and I appreciate the invite. For far too long, you, the residents of Broome County, have been the victims of a fractured relationship amongst community partners here in Broome County. It's incumbent to your safety that we restore a working relationship amongst our community partners and members of law enforcement. That's essential to ensuring the safety of Broome County. As it relates to being objective, I have prided myself to the best of my ability, always ensuring that what I'm doing is to the best of my ability in the best interest of the community. I've done that through the numerous years of civic duty and community service that I've offered to this wonderful community in various forms of non-for-profit service. Some of those are the Boys and Girls Club. Some of those are the Library Foundation. I'm past president of the Broome County Bar Association. I donated numerous years on the Adult Treatment Court. I've given a lot of time, effort, and energy to youth sports, as well as handling thousands of cases on both the federal, state, and local level all throughout this state. Thank you. And the question for you, Mr. Battisti, how can Broome County voters have confidence that you will handle every matter that comes before the DA's office with honesty and integrity going forward? Whether you're a prosecutor or defense attorney, it's important that you focus on justice. The role of a district attorney is not just to secure convictions, it's to ensure that justice is done. You do this by implementing an objective approach not a subjective approach, but an objective approach ensuring to the best of your ability that your team ensures that the innocent are exonerated and the guilty are convicted. Thank you, Mr. Battisti. Our next question will be from Anthony Borelli from the Press and Sun Bulletin and Press Connects. Uh, thank you. Uh, I believe this, uh, I believe uh, Mr. Battisti gets to answer this question first. Uh, uh, why should the everyday person care about the relationship between the district attorney and law enforcement? 
Effective criminal prosecution requires a team approach. On this team, if we have teammates that are not working together, we're not going to achieve maximum benefit for the residents of Broome County. It is so important that everybody is working together. The only way this is going to happen is if we have trust and respect amongst members of the community, members of law enforcement, our community partners. This is essential. This trust is alive and well. It's not a coincidence that I've been endorsed by our sheriff, by numerous chiefs, by Council 82 and NYSUPA, state union organizations that represent almost all members of law enforcement here in Broome County. It is essential to ensure that we all work together, that we all have a seat at the table, that we apply a team approach so that every individual in this community can be as safe as possible. Thank you, Mr. Battisti, and we will allow a brief rebuttal from Mr. Korchak. Okay, um, I'm sorry, but my understanding was I'm able to answer the question yeah, and then rebuttal the comes question. after, correct? Yeah. I just want to make sure that yeah, we get the rules okay. clear. Uh, there seems to be some myth out there that there's some fractured relationship between the current district attorney's office uh, and law enforcement. Broome County District Attorney's Office employees are on call for the police 24-7. We've had great success at trial. Uh, Defendant Burton received a life without parole sentence. Defendant Chapel, 50 to life. This can't be done without cooperation and teamwork between law enforcement and the DA's office. The relationship has to be professional, not personal. You can't be hanging out with police officers smoking cigars. It doesn't work. There's a professional relationship because the DA has to make the tough decisions. What cases to prosecute, what cases not to prosecute, what cases have to go to trial. Again, if you have influence from police officers, we want their input and we take their input, but there are tough decisions that have to be made by the district attorney on a daily basis. I've had seven murder trials with law enforcement within the city of Binghamton over my time as a prosecutor, and I have seven murder convictions gaining justice for victims and their families. You can't do that if you're so-called soft on crime or don't have a great relationship with law enforcement. Ask any police officer that I've worked with over the years and they will tell you. Thank you, Mr. Korczak. A brief response from Mr. Battisti. Endorsements speak volumes. If you look at the individuals that have endorsed me, look at who they are, look at their background, look at how many years they've been involved in law enforcement, and look at their credentials. This speaks volumes. These are individuals that have worked with Mr. Korchak throughout his career. And look at who they're supporting and why. To me, that speaks volumes. Thank you. And a brief response to that, Mr. Korchak. As I've said over and over during this campaign, uh, endorsements don't replace experience. And you really have to look at endorsements from people who have never seen you in court, never worked with you. Uh, I'm endorsed by the Honorable Martin Smith, who's seen both of us in court on a regular basis over the years. The DA have to make, make calls on tough cases, and he can't be influenced by outside forces. Uh, again, I'm for the victims, and that's why I supported uh, legislation to regulate and uh, keep police officers from having improper relationships with crime victims. My opponent has been silent on that. And that... Um that wraps up question two. Now moving on to question three. Yes, uh, kind of segueing here. Uh, uh, th this next question, I guess, uh, uh, what should the uh, district attorney's role be regarding the treatment of crime victims? And I believe uh, Mr. Korchak gets to do the next uh, question first. Over my 21 years as a prosecutor, I handled thousands of cases involving crime victims. The crime victims have to be informed of the case, uh, the facts of the case have to be discussed with them and evaluated. And we have to make a big determination, uh, I use my years of experience doing, as to whether someone will testify or not testify. They need to be explained the rules of law. The victims, unfortunately, are not always happy with the result of the case. The DA has to follow the rule of law. You may have some cases out there like a sex offender gets a sentence that the public thinks is light. However, what's been factored in behind the scenes is that the child who was molested does not have to testify. Factors like that are very important, and you can only make those determinations with years of experience that I have. You don't make your decisions as district attorney based on the press or what's popular or unpopular. It has to be just and fair. Those are the decisions that have to be made by the district attorney. 
And then uh, Mr. Battisti, uh, your response. You've got to ensure the victims have a voice. Over the last few years, victims have not had a voice. There's a fractured relationship amongst members of the district attorney and a lot of our community partners that work with victims. We have to ensure that victims are educated, that they're aware of proceedings, that if an order of protection to protect them is necessary, that they get one. This is not happening. We have to ensure that they're advised of all their rights by executive order. That's not happening. We need to bring back the victim advocates that worked in the district attorney's office that were kicked out in January of 2016 when Mr. Korchek's administration took over. It's these individuals that make up the team, the team that ensure that victims have a voice, that victims are heard, and that our victims are protected to the best of our ability. Working as a team, we can do this, and I'm committed to ensuring the safety of all victims in our community. Uh, brief rebuttal, Mr. Korchak. Well, it's easy to pick out facts um, from certain cases and complain about the outcome being the Monday morning quarterback uh, for someone who's never worked in the DA's office, never put a victim in front of a grand jury, never put a victim uh, on the witness stand at a trial to be subject to cross-examination. Again, it's this deception that's been going on throughout the campaign. There was a case at the DA's office where uh, someone was sentenced uh, to what was considered a lighter sentence. The DA asked for prison, yet my opponent put in his TV ads that the district attorney's office agreed to probation. Again, that doesn't help the community. It doesn't help the victims, this misleading campaign strategy. The DA must be a straight shooter. A brief uh, rebuttal, Mr. Battisti. Last year, an individual was convicted for violently raping a nurse at UHS hospitals. Mr. Korchak and Mr. Cornwall took to the news, blasting the Honorable Joseph Cauley for too lenient of a sentence. Fact of the matter is, Mr. Korchak did not indict the appropriate charge. Had he done so, that individual would have been facing life in prison. It was not Judge Cauley, it was Mr. Korchak's incompetence. Thank you, Mr. Battisti. Now on to question four. Uh, what impact will recently passed reforms, including changes to the discovery law and cashless bail, have on the DA's office day-to-day -day operations and resources? And I believe this question goes to Mr. Battisti first. Thanks to Governor Cuomo and those downstate Democrats, it's a new law. I don't agree with it, but unfortunately, we must follow it. We're going to have to ensure that we are staffed appropriately. We are going to have to ensure that we have a good working relationship with the men and women of law enforcement to receive the police reports, the documentation that must be provided in new statutory time periods. We must ensure that there's a good working relationship, because if there's not a good working relationship, if we don't have the appropriate people in the right positions, we're not going to be able to comply. And if we don't comply, it's going to penalize the prosecution from being able to do the job they need to do. As it relates to cashless bail, that's going to be a new procedure for the district attorney's office. A lot of individuals will be issued appearance tickets. They will appear at court at a later date. These are new processes. We need to educate. We need to mentor the other district attorneys in the office. And we have to ensure that the members of law enforcement are aware of this as well. It's going to require training, oversight, and a team approach. Mr. Korczak? Thank you. Well, the effects of these laws have yet to be uh, come into play. However, the district attorney's office is currently working with the New York State District Attorneys Association, the New York State Prosecutors Association, to implement uh, these changes in the law as we reach 2020. Uh, the DA's office is already undergoing training uh, and finding out more information as to how the bail reform will work. Unfortunately, there will be a lot of uh, criminal defendants out on the streets, released on their own recognizance by law. The district attorney won't have as much input into uh, whether someone is held on bail or not. As far as the automatic discovery provisions that are going to be implemented on January 1st of 2020, CPL section 245, uh, that's going to speed up the process that the prosecution has to turn documents over to the defense in a criminal case. Actually, what's been implemented is a def criminal defendant cannot plead guilty to a charge until they are advised and apprised of all the police reports and all the documents that they are entitled to under the statute. That includes grand jury transcripts, statements of witnesses, and things of that nature. It is going to be a burden on the district attorney's office staff, but we are already implementing and putting the pieces in place for a smooth transition in 2020. Brief rebuttal, uh, Mr. Battisti. The only way to be successful with these modifications to the law is to ensure a team approach. 
If we're not working good with our community partners, we're not going to be able to comply. So it's not just the functions within the district attorney's office, but it's also being able to work effectively with the men and women of law enforcement. Okay, Mr. Korczak, do you have a brief rebuttal on that? Just briefly, uh, myself with the district attorney's office are already doing the job. It, we've implemented the raise the age changes in the law, uh, the bail reform and the discovery laws that are coming up. We are well versed on it. Uh, someone coming from outside the office will not be as well versed as those inside. Uh, just as Mr. Battisti suggested that we form an elder abuse task force that unfortunately for him is already in place and already protecting the seniors in our community. That's why it's important for the district attorney to know what's going on within the county and to know the law. Thank you candidates. Now Bob will be asking question five. And the question first will be directed to Mr. Korchak. What is your stance on existing diversion programs, specialized courts, and, and possible support for new initiatives, including perhaps a mental health court similar to the one that is now being implemented in Tompkins County? Well, Bob, all the diversion programs will be reviewed uh, if I'm fortunate enough to be put into office as district attorney on January 1st. Uh, it's not a matter of expanding programs. Um, we throw money at programs in New York State uh, not really realizing that it's the taxpayer's money. The solution isn't to expand government, it's to make it more efficient. We have more participants in the drug court than ever before in Broome County. And it's no coincidence that together with that, property crime rates have gone down. There are limits on person's eligibility to get into these programs, such as no prior violent history, no sex crimes, things of that nature. But to put a mental health court, as my opponent is suggesting, as a separate court is a waste of the taxpayer's money. I would intend to put the mental health court under the umbrella of the drug court, which is already in place. We have professionals working within the substance abuse, uh, for lack of a better term, community, uh, counseling people uh, for their problems. We can implement mental health court under the umbrella of drug court and save the taxpayer's money. We have the Addiction Center of Broome County, Broome County Mental Health that are doing great jobs with people. They just need the guidance to be referred to these programs so we can help them help themselves. Thank you. Now, Mr. Battisti, your stance regarding existing diversion programs and specialized courts and that possibility of a mental health court being developed here in Broome County. When we talk about diversion programs, there is a difference between some diversion programs and specialty courts. Diversion programs, one of the diversion programs we have here in Broome County is the Traffic Diversion Program. That typically on an annual basis raises roughly $2 million. That was audited last year by the County Comptroller. The County Comptroller specifically stated that those funds currently held in a trust account should not be in a trust account. They should not be at the control of one individual, the District Attorney. Those funds should go into the general fund for the benefit of all residents in Broome County. Additionally, through diversion, I don't believe that individuals that commit vehicle and traffic offenses in construction zones should have their charges dismissed just because they take a defensive driving course. The treatment alternative to prosecution program I think needs to be longer when we're treating individuals that are suffering from substance abuse issues. We need longer treatment in order for this to be effective for our loved ones. As it relates to a mental health treatment court, we need a mental health treatment court. There's a reason we have different specialty courts. It's because different individuals dealing with different ailments need different curriculum and different treatment providers to be effective. The start court, startup court in Tompkins County is the first county in the 6th Judicial District. It's working well. They're handling nonviolent misdemeanors. There are numerous individuals, 8 million people in the United States diagnosed with significant mental health issues. 4 million of those go undiagnosed and untreated. If we're going to stop the rate of recidivism, if we're going to stop repeat offenders, we need to ensure we have all the tools available. If this money is in the general fund, it can fund some of these positions. Currently, we have one district attorney overseeing the district attorney's office surrounding drug court, DWI court, veterans court. We need more staff in that program. Thank you. Mr. Battisti, a brief response from Mr. Korchak. Just briefly, as I've said in the past, I'm leaving that to the professionals, the, the great men and women who work in our drug court uh, and our other courts. The DA is not a social worker. The DA has to be a prosecutor who vigorously prosecutes the guilty and protects the innocent victims and their families. 
Uh, and all of these programs are very good, but what must, must be pointed out is all of these programs involve plea bargains. Uh, which have been a big point of this campaign that my opponent keeps complaining about. But no one goes to drug court or treatment court unless they're afforded the opportunity to receive a plea bargain. And Mr. Battisti, do you have a brief response? For numerous years, I was the volunteer on the drug court program. Numerous individuals came into that program fighting for their life, and a lot of them were not effective. We found out because different individuals from different walks of life need a different curriculum. Tell a veteran who's coming back, who's suffering from a mental health disorder, that they need to be treated the same as an individual who hurt their leg and is now treated and addicted to opioids. That's not fair. We need to do more for these men and women. We need to offer more services. We need a mental health treatment court, and we can't have all the same courts under the same umbrella. These treatment courts have years of experience. They have been sanctioned, approved by the New York State court system, and we need to utilize each and every one to the best of our ability, to the safety of our community. Uh, gentlemen, I'm told we're going to be circling back to an earlier question. Uh, so if you could please respond uh, as you did. Uh, it will be, uh, the question will be first directed to Mr. Korchak. And that question is our third question, which was, what should the DA's office uh, role be regarding the treatment of crime victims? I believe I've already answered this, that I've been working for 21 years with uh, crime victims. Uh, it's important to give them the services that they need, but also to keep them informed of what's going on in court with their particular case. Um, each case is different. It takes years of experience to determine how to handle a certain crime victim under a certain case. For example, if someone gets struck in the head with a bottle, under New York State law, that's assault in the second degree. Um, the maximum sentence on that is seven years in New York State Prison if the judge gives the maximum sentence. Uh, crime victims don't always understand the law, and it's important to sit them down and go through the process. They might not think a sentence is harsh, harsh enough based on the fact that they were a crime victim. And we understand that. We take that into consideration. But a DA's purpose is to follow the law and evaluate the cases and be sure that you take a case to trial you have a good chance of finding the defendant guilty. You don't put victims out on the stand, out on a limb to be cross-examined just for the sake of doing a trial. You have to evaluate all the factors involved, and there are many behind the scenes that we can't talk about tonight, in making a determination and getting a just outcome. OK. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Battisti, uh, your response, uh, what should the DA's role be regarding the treatment of crime victims? Crime victims need a voice. They need to be heard. We have to seriously consider their input surrounding a case, how to proceed. Will they testify? Will it go to grand jury? Do they need an order of protection? And what's the appropriate sentence? We need to advise them by law of all their rights and keep them apprised of the proceedings each and every step of the way. It's one thing to talk about what victims need, but it's more important to ensure that they get it. Victims are not getting everything they're entitled to. We need to ensure they do. They are a victim of a crime, and it's our duty to ensure that we provide them with each and every right that they are entitled to under the law. There were advocates in the district attorney's office for a long time. Unfortunately, they were kicked out in January of 2016. They need to come back. These advocates help ensure that everything victims are entitled to, they get. And if we ensure that victims are protected, the victims have a voice, that they're heard, we are doing what we need to do to make Broome County the best and safest community it can possibly be. Um, Mr. Korchak, do you have any rebuttal? Um, just briefly, first of all, the crime victims were moved out of the district attorney's office so we had more space for attorneys and other individuals in the office. Uh, we're constantly working with the Crime Victims Assistance Center, helping victims throughout the county. It's not so much to talk about it, as Mr. Batisti says, but I've been doing it for 21 years, uh, getting justice for the crime victims and their families. The case he was referring to before, I can't get into details, because I had confidential information that I spoke with about the victim. And that result uh, was run by the victim uh, before the case was resolved. This is a constant issue that comes up during the campaign. Mr. Batisti knows that I cannot speak ethically about certain issues in cases, and he keeps bringing them up knowing that I can't respond. Uh, Mr. B Mr. Batisti, do you have any brief rebuttal? It's important that victims have a voice and victims are heard 
each and every stage of the proceedings. Victims should not be considered annoying. We must ensure that we speak to them and that all of their rights are protected. Orders of protection, court dates, outcome, what's going on with the case, what's the appropriate sentence, have things changed. We need to ensure that we're doing everything we can to protect the victims of crimes here in Broome County, and I'm committed to doing that. All right, thank you. Uh, and uh, Bree, we're, we're going to be circling back to an earlier question with respect to uh, changes, changes to discovery law. Again, so I know I asked this earlier, but we were having technical difficulties, but what impact will recently passed reforms, including changes to the discovery law and cashless bail, have on the DA's office, day-to-day -day operations and resources? And I believe the question goes to Mr. Battisti first. It's important under these new laws that were created by Governor Cuomo and our downstate Democrats, I do not agree with it, but it's a law and I must comply with it. It's important that we have a good working relationship with law enforcement because a lot of the information that we have to provide comes from law enforcement. We need to ensure we provide it within the statutory time or we can be penalized in the prosecution of the case. It's important that we have the appropriate staffing, the appropriate technology, the appropriate training, and the appropriate mentoring going on in the office to ensure that we comply. It's new, and with any new mechanism, with any new law, we need to ensure effective training. We need to ensure effective mentoring. We need to ensure that the individuals working in our office are aware of each and every change in the law so that we comply to the best of our ability. Mr. Korczak? Well, the district attorney's office has already been dealing with these changes in the law. Just as we adapted to the raise the age legislation that uh, was enacted, uh, we've got training going on for our assistant district attorneys through the New York State Prosecutors Institute. Um, the bail reform is a concern because there will be offenders out on the street that ordinarily would be held in on bail. Um, they've taken away really the... Um, the discretion of the court and the district attorney's office in releasing certain low-level offenders. As far as the New York State discovery laws go, the new uh, legislation will come into effect on January 1st. It will greatly affect the way the criminal justice system operates in Broome County and throughout New York State. It's called automatic discovery. Grand jury transcripts, witness statements, uh, body cams of police officers, expert witness information is all going to have to be turned over at a very early date to the defense attorney. It's a concern for the prosecution because we have witnesses that are very sensitive, that may not want to be revealed, and we will have to go to a judge and get what's called a protective order to protect them from their identities being revealed. It's going to be a challenge, but we're already on top of it and we're already training for it, and we will be ready. Brief rebuttal, uh, Mr. Battisti. It's gonna be difficult. It's dramatic change, but with appropriate leadership and a team approach and educating our district attorneys and educating the men and women of law enforcement and ensuring that the office is run the right way, ensuring the district attorney is present, ensuring the district attorney is involved, ensuring the district attorney is part of that team, it can be done, and we will do it. And by doing that, we will ensure the utmost safety for this community. Mr. Kortak, brief rebuttal on that. We are already doing the job at the district's attorney's office, implementing the raise the age uh, changes in the law, bail reform, as well as the discovery laws. It's very important that a district attorney knows the law and know what's going on in the community. Recently, my uh, opponent suggested that there be an elder abuse task force form to protect the seniors of Broome County. Little did he know, it's already in place. It's been in place since January of 2019. The DA's office attends meetings with the New York State Attorney General's Office, DSS Legal Services, Office for Aging, and Action for Older Persons to review cases where elder abuse may exist and refer it for prosecution. The District Attorney's Office has already prosecuted contractors that have preyed on our seniors, and we intend to keep doing that in the future. Thank you, Mr. Korchak. Now the next question, Bob. And this regards uh, a situation that's changing in New York State. The question is, as district attorney, how would you handle prosecutions of low-level marijuana cases, such as low-level marijuana possession cases? Some judges in parts of New York State have already changed the way uh, they're handling these cases. And we start with Mr. Fortune. Okay, thank you, Bob. Uh, this is really already being addressed in the criminal justice system because a first-time offender uh, under the New York State penal law who has a small amount of marijuana is afforded what's called an ACD. 
uh, where they, nothing goes on their record. Though I'm opposed to uh, legalization of marijuana, I'm obligated to follow the laws of New York State, as all district attorneys are, obligated to follow the, on the law whether you agree with it or not. When the police charge a case, it comes to the district attorney's office. If the DA does not agree with the charge that was filed by the police, they can reduce it to a lower charge or raise it to a higher charge. This is the discretion of the DA, and this is why you have to have a working, not social, relationship with police officers. The DA has to make the tough decisions and follow the laws of New York State. The DA's job is not to stand up to Cuomo as much as we'd all like to. The New York State District Attorneys Association and the New York State Prosecutors Association is already doing that, and we support them. And Mr. Batista, your approach to the possible prosecution of low-level marijuana possession cases. The law is the law, and I must follow the law. I must be objective. If there's a violation of the law, we must prosecute that. We must prosecute that based upon evaluating the totality of circumstances. Everybody involved. Everybody involved. As it relates to the District Attorneys Association, it's important as a district attorney that you're part of that organization, that you engage in that organization, that you make your voice being heard. That's what it's there for. It's easy to say you don't agree with something when your voice was never heard. Stand up and allow your voice to be heard. As it relates to low-level marijuana cases, they've got to be prosecuted based upon the facts and circumstances because that's the law. If I didn't prosecute those, I wouldn't be upholding my ethical obligation. Thank you, Mr. Batiste. Mr. Korchak, do you have a brief rebuttal? My brief rebuttal is that the DA needs to follow the law under all circumstances. The rules have to apply equally to everyone in the county, be it some of the issues that came up in this uh, campaign, campaign finances. You can't accept donations that are inappropriately over the limit. You can't release sealed court documents without the permission of the parties involved. And obviously, you must be financially responsible and pay your taxes. The position of DA needs to be one of honesty, integrity, and experience. Mr. Batiste, a response. Despite the political attack ads, I am committed to the issues that are plaguing Broome County on a daily basis. I am committed to implementing a teamwork approach. I am committed to ensuring that justice is our number one priority. And I am committed to ensuring that Broome County is the best and safest possible community it can be. Thank you. Thank you. Now this question is directed um, to Mr. Batiste first. What is your approach on drug, specifically opioid-related uh, drug trafficking? When you talk about drug offenses, it's important to classify individuals into two different compartments. One, are they battling a substance abuse? And two, are they truly peddling poison? Are they drug dealers? The way we do this is by evaluating cases on a daily basis. Evalu evaluating them on their separate but equal sets of facts. Speaking to the members of law enforcement, the members of law enforcement that were involved in the investigation. What did they see? What did they do? What were the parties involved? What were the defendant's role? How long were they involved? It's important because if an individual is a drug dealer, they must be prosecuted. They must not receive lenient plea bargains. They're sentencing charges. There's no reason why we should be on the bottom of those for individuals peddling poison to our loved ones. If individuals are truly suffering from a substance abuse disorder or a mental health disorder, it's important that we give them the treatment they so desperately need. My many years on the drug court team, my many years in the criminal arena, handling thousands of cases throughout New York State in both the federal, state, and local system, put me in a phenomenal position to evaluate these cases. But it's important you implement a teamwork approach so that everybody involved in the process of that case can be heard. Because the more information we have, the better the decision we can make to ensure the safety for Broome County. Mr. Korchak, what is your approach? Well, in addressing the opioid issue, I have to say that through the district attorney's office programs, uh, more individuals are in drug court than ever before, and more drug dealers are in state prison. The district attorney has to follow the law. As hard as it is to believe, dealing drugs out on the streets is a nonviolent offense. You have individuals that come up for their second time around as a drug dealer, drug conviction, and they can still get probation, they can still get programs, and be out on the streets uh, very quickly, unfortunately. DA's office has been tackling the opioid problem and the overdose problem. 76 overdose deaths in 2016 
down to 66 in 17, down to 31 in 18. And we were doing great in 2019. However, there was a spike in uh, the overdoses due to the uh, fentanyl coming into our community. Uh, the DA's office has worked with the Broome County Health Department, other agencies, the Sheriff's Department to educate the public and get this problem under control, which we did. Uh, it is ironic that my opponent talks about prosecuting drug dealers and putting people into programs when he still continues to represent drug dealers who are dealing fentanyl on our streets two weeks before the election. A brief rebuttal, uh, Mr. Battisti. Again, I'm not here to throw jabs. I'm not going to talk about the individuals that Mr. Korchak has represented as a defense attorney. I'm here to stick to the issues. If you're a pusher, you're going to be prosecuted, and you're going to be prosecuted aggressively, and we will take cases to trial. If you're battling a substance abuse, you will get the treatment you need. We will ensure effective treatment. We will ensure the specialty courts are staffed appropriately. We will ensure that individuals that need treatment get treatment in a timely fashion. They're not sitting incarcerated, waiting for a bed date in treatment, because that's in nobody's best interest, and I am committed to focusing on the issues and making Broome County the best and safest community it can possibly be. Mr. Korchak, brief rebuttal. Yes, battling this uh, problem in Broome County is very difficult, but the district attorney's office, together with other agencies within the county, have done a great job to get this under control. And if it spikes again, we will take the appropriate steps. Uh, I think it's, it's unfortunate that some things in this um, election have been taken out of context, and I wish that would stop for the final two weeks of the campaign. Some comments I made about opioid deaths and overdose deaths going down was made in the early part of January of this year. They're taken out of context, put in a TV ad in March, and again, this doesn't do the community any good or those individuals who are seeking treatment. Thank you. Now we're moving on to question eight. And Anthony, you have that question for us. Yes, this first qu this, this question goes to Mr. Korchak first. Uh, how does your professional experience pertain to what it takes to perform the job of district attorney? I've been a prosecutor for 21 years and attorney for 30 years, and I served a year as judge in the town of Union. Uh, I put away some of the most violent criminals in Broome County during the course of my career. The, the one example I always go back to is Clemeth Maddox, a case I worked on with the Binghamton Police Department. Uh, he murdered an infant. It was a shaken baby case. I had to work with forensic pathologists, a forensic ophthalmologist, a neuropathologist. I couldn't even pronounce some of these words before I started this case. Over my 21 years and over 100 jury trials, I've been able to secure justice for many victims, just as I did in this case. We went to trial, the defendant was convicted of murdering that infant, and he is still in state prison to this day. Again, you need someone in the DA's office who has experience. This is not a job for on-the-job training. God forbid you or your family members were victim of a crime. Who would you want handling the case? Who would you want evaluating the case? You'd want someone who started as a prosecutor in 1989. That's when I made my decision that I wanted to make this my life's work. And I've been doing it for the people of Broome County and New York State for 21 years. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Battisti, uh, how does your professional experience uh, pertain to what it takes to perform the job of district attorney? I think it's important to note that the role of district attorney is not merely defined as going to court. Our current district attorney in four years has not tried one jury trial in Broome County Court. The role of district attorney is understanding the community understanding families, and how to bring people together. For the first time, Broome County declared a state of emergency for overdose opioid deaths. Who could imagine? It's not working. It must be fixed. We need a new approach. We need an objective approach, not a subjective approach. We have to ensure that we're working together as a team. We have individuals in certain positions in Broome County. It's so important that we allow the individuals in those positions to do their job. The district attorney's office has become far too wide and not deep enough. The mission statement must be followed. I've been an educator in the community. I've been a professor at SUNY Broome. I've taught at the Law Enforcement Academy. For numerous years, I have handled cases in both the federal, state, and local courts all over New York State. I've seen what works and what doesn't work. I've been involved in the community. 
I've been a union attorney for members of law enforcement. I know, way my, what, I know my way around the courtroom, and I also know my way around the community. It's important that a district attorney be well-rounded. Understand, restore working relationships, get rid of fractured relationships, and ensure that justice and the safety of all the residents of Broome County is our number one priority, and I am committed to doing that as your next district attorney. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Korchak, do you have a brief rebuttal to that? Just briefly, well, to be well-rounded as a district attorney, you need to be a trial attorney. You need to have worked your way up from the bottom at a district attorney's office and worked your way up to the top. That's the experience necessary to secure justice for crime victims and also to train the younger attorneys who are the future of our community. They're going to be keeping our grandchildren safe. I think it's ironic that it was actually on Bob Joseph's show earlier in the uh, campaign. Bob asked myself and Mr. Battisti why you want to be district attorney. And Mr. Battisti's response was, Bob, I've always wanted to get into politics since I was a little boy. Well, the district attorney's office does not need politics. The district attorney's office needs a career prosecutor. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Battisti, do you have a brief uh, final rebuttal for the next question? It's important to consider the men and women of law enforcement and who they're supporting in this election. So many of these individuals have worked alongside Mike Korchak his complete career, and they're not supporting Mike Korchak. They're supporting me. The role of district attorney is about maximizing potential, maximizing potential so the safety of our community can be our number one priority. Mr. Korchak is in that office. He's been in that office, and it's not working. It's time for a change, and I'm committed to being that change and making Broome County the best and safest it can possibly be. Thank you, Mr. Batiste. We should point out this is a live debate. The candidates are here live at the Fox 40 studio in Vestal, and it's a rare opportunity to talk about a wide range of issues associated with this campaign. As we wrap up, we talked about the professional experience of the candidates. This question focuses on personal life experiences, and I'm going to ask each candidate to talk about how some of their personal life experiences may shape the way they handle the job of district attorney if they're elected in November. And first, I would direct this question to Mr. Battisti. Bob, thank you very much. For the last 15 years, I've been handling cases throughout New York State. It's this experience, it's these opportunities that put me in an incredible position to evaluate cases. I have been a community advocate. I have engaged in community service. I have worked with individuals, individuals with different backgrounds, individuals with different ideological beliefs, individuals that come from all different walks of life. But it's important that we ensure that everybody has a voice, everybody has a seat at the table, and everybody have an opportunity to be heard. By doing this, it's called a team approach. It's basics. We need to ensure that everybody's involved. We're not going to tell them how to do their job. We're going to work with them. Handling cases, volunteering, being on the ground, being in the community, being a father of five, understanding what works, understanding what doesn't work, being a volunteer, working with drug addicts, working with individuals that are at the bottom, working with victims, receiving the Alice Mills Award from the YWCA, who's given to an advocate for female victims of domestic violence on an annual basis. I have received that. My pro bono service, working in the criminal justice system all over New York State. It's these qualities that make me best suited to be the next district attorney in Broome County. And if given the opportunity, I will ensure that we stop at nothing to ensure the safety of Broome County, to ensure that we address the opioid epidemic, to ensure that cases are prosecuted, and to ensure that everybody's working together for the same common goal. Thank you, Mr. Battisti. Mr. Korczak, how would your personal life experiences inform your approach to the job of Broome County District Attorney if you are the winner in November's general election? Well, I've had a longer life than Mr. Battisti so far, so, and I'm thankful for that. But uh, some of my personal life experience are kind of drawn from my uh, trial experience and my district attorney experience. This goes back to 1990, after I started in the district attorney's office uh, in 1989. Fresh out of law school, I was a prosecutor, and I was sent to a murder scene. Back in those days, the prosecutor was sent to the murder scene to assist the district to assist law enforcement with search warrants, talk to witnesses, and prepare the case for grand jury. 
there was a body lying on the ground. And I went over there, the police officer showed me the, the individual who had been shot and killed out in a housing project in the South Bronx. Uh, he was 20-something years old. I was 20-something years old at that time. It was a little bit distressing at the time, and I heard individuals sobbing in the, uh, in the audience, or rather in the crowd, and I, that, that's when it hit me, that this is someone's child, this is someone's son, this is someone's brother, and this person, no matter what the circumstances got them there, they need justice. And that's when I decided, from that experience, to be a career prosecutor to be the best prosecutor that I can be, to work with victims and keep victims first. That's what I've been doing for 21 years, and that's what I will continue to do as Broome County's next district attorney. Mr. Battisti, do you have a brief response to that? I think it's important that we remember the role of district attorney, again, is not merely defined as going to court. You are a manager. You are a supervisor. You bring the best out of each and every single individual. There is 28 prosecutors in the district attorney's office. We were just battling a state of emergency for an opioid epidemic. Crime is at an all-time high. The most recent statistics show that Broome County has the second highest crime rate in all of New York State. It's not working. We need change, and I'm committed to being that change to ensure the safety of all the residents in Broome County. Brief response from Mr. Korczak. I would tell the people of Broome County to look up the statistics yourself. They're all online and make your own determinations that we do have a safe community. Uh, Mr. Bististi received award, an award from uh, some association says he fights for female crime victims. Well, when I came forward to fight for a female crime victim several weeks back to ask for legislation prohibiting improper relationships between police and victims, he remained silent on that. I think it's uh, ironic that at a last appearance that we had together at the Broome County Women's Republican uh, dinner, Mr. Battisti finished his address with, take a chance on me. I don't think the people of Broome County should be taking a chance on who their next district attorney is. They need someone with experience. Thank you, Mr. Korczak. Thank you, candidates. Now, we are all out of time for tonight. Um, a special thank you to the candidates for joining us for this live debate. and. Our candidates will be facing off in the primary election June 25th. Whoever wins the primary will face Democratic DA candidate Deborah Gelson. Now, a special thank you to our moderators, Bob Joseph and Anthony Borelli, for joining us this evening. It's a pleasure. Thank you.